I am pretty confident that most of you that are here don't really want to hear a lecture according to Professor Tita. And I think I can give you that lecture. I will do that at the end. What we really want are three things. And I think if our panel don't give it to you, ask them, because they know it. They just need to give it to you first. They have experiences in different countries. What is it about that country that makes them feel that you can succeed in that country? What are the compelling reasons for doing business in that country? That's number one. If they don't tell you, ask them. The second thing is if you are like Tito, you put your foot in your mouth first and you, before you try to drag it out. In other words, what are the showstoppers? If I'm going to go to that country and do business, what must I avoid before they kick me out or lock me up <laughs> in some cases? We call them showstoppers. And then thirdly, and I would not want them to play God, what is that one thing that you believe one does to succeed? And I always tell my students this. If you see a successful person, don't take the advice. Because whatever they did to succeed, if they told everybody, they would not be successful. <laughs> you know, in, in other words, you know, they can share with you what they think it takes to succeed. But don't take their word as gospel. But take it as an approach that you need to reflect on. Now, these are the three things that I hope our panel will leave you with. And again, if they don't ask, and you don't ask, they won't tell you, but they do know that that's what I, I really expect for them to do. I'll begin with the I do. The, um, I married a Chinese, and my Chinese pronunciation is Utsuola, not bad. But my Chinese hearing and understanding is very meager. And if you ask questions in Chinese, you won't get answers. <laughs> or maybe you'll get an answer to a different question. Um, I'm going to talk about China. And since we're on the subject of love, let me tell the first criteria of doing business and going, being successful in China is to love China. And it is a, it's a great culture to love. It receives it well, it gives it well, and it, in, it reciprocates beautifully. And that, if, if you believe that life is about the journey and not about the destination, then that's the destination where you want to take your entrepreneurial journey. And so uh, now, uh, John has suggested how to say where I'm coming from. Uh, originally, I thought I'm a serial entrepreneur, but I'm also a sino entrepreneur. And that's where I am today. Uh, I started a couple of companies, got one funded by a venture capitalist. It was actually Exxon Enterprises. And uh, in the Boston area, it became uh, Burbex, which sort of became uh, um, Dragon Systems, Dragon Ventures, Dragon Systems. And so that was the first. And then uh, I started a software development company that took to the NASDAQ. And that was the second. And, uh, and I've been around Boston, although I'm now in Detroit watching the meltdown in the front row center seat. Uh, now, when we, went to Lod when we went to China, first, we had the love, but we needed the logic. What was the logic? The problem was a to make a Japanese financial portal. So you want somebody who knows some Japanese. Uh, the character set is close. And uh, for programming, the uh, two-byte sensitivity is really necessary. And also, um, how characters scale. In English, you can get a lot of scale out of a character. You can have little tiny letters and really big letters. If you make really tiny Japanese characters or Chinese characters equivalently, you get all black. <laughs> so like, where's the information? 
it's, it's masked. And so those kinds of sensitivity, there's also um, a subtle sensitivity about face. And it's actually different in Japan than in China, but um, the Chinese are well aware of it, so that when you ask questions on an interactive portal, you want to ask in a way that preserves face for somebody who doesn't know the answer to the question that you're asking. Even if it's, you know, what do you want to do next? If you don't know, have a default. Have it time out. Have it move on. And so those were, for example, when we first went to China, they had a CAD CAM. People, everybody know what CAD CAM is? Engineering design software. And, and they had DEC, a digital equipment company, processors that were turned off. And we said, what's going on? And they were reluctant to, first of all, it's all in English, reluctant to jump in and give it a try. So those, you've got to jump over that if you're going to make a Japanese portal. Why didn't we go to Japan? Like, you didn't know there was a difference? There is a difference. One is uh, the best Japanese port, um, programmers all work for the, the large uh, karutsus, the large conglomerates in, Ch in Japan. So you couldn't get them. Second, cost of living in Tokyo and in, in Japan is uh, three to five times what it was in Beijing. So it made sense to go to uh, Beijing and it um, there were other good reasons for going there. Uh, the, um, they were also hungry, and so we had our pick of who we could have as a development partner and who we could have as programmers. And, and the talent is very substantial, and they would prefer to work with and for an American company, particularly the young people. So. Uh, Everything looked uh, terrific, and uh, one thing, another thing, aside from loving the Chinese, it is objective not to underestimate their capability. If you look at their space program, you look at the um, Olympics 2008, you can look at whatever you like. They had a computer, a, a DEC processor, faster than DEC in the early 80s. Uh, and they had the nuclear weapons. They made a hydrogen bomb two year, a year and a half after the nuclear bomb. And our CIA missed that one also. They predicted it would take five to 10 years uh, for the Chinese to go from a, hydro, from a, fission, a, a fusion bomb to a fission bomb. We got that right. We also had to have powerful relation, not had to have. We also had the benefit of powerful relationships. Powerful may not be the right adjective for the kinds of relationships that are very successful in China, uh, but it, in our case, ours were powerful. Uh, I would recommend appropriate, suitable, balanced, not powerful necessarily. Uh, powerful relationships can cause ca catatonia. You say, wow, they're so powerful, I, I, I dare not make a mistake. And that in turn can translate into I dare not do anything except what I'm told, and then you miss the value that they can add. The th third, um, uh, as a result, we got a credible and very good partner. We got the aerospace, uh, we got the Lockheed of China as our partner to arrange the programming, and they did uh, uh, a pretty good job. Um, and they had all all the wherewithal, they had a talent pool, Lockheed, as Lockheed does, they had the same kind of talent pool, and we were allowed to fish into that talent pool. So those parts we got right. We got one item wrong. 